Now the sages instituted this particular time as a auspicious time to do tshuva because the gates of heaven are open wider, if you will, to help a person do tshuva for this, whereas the rest of the year you can do it, but you're on your own. So as I mentioned in previous shurim, the way to do tshuva for it briefly is, number one, you have to stop. Number two, you have to get educated. One of the ways to get educated for it in the English language is to simply watch all of our lectures pertaining to this topic. There's somewhere in the neighborhood of 70, 70 something lectures pertaining to this topic that we've made. Some are long, some are short, but every single one of them is different from the other that can teach you a lot of different things. Watch every single one of them, add them to your study schedule. Again, male, female, married, single, old, young, doesn't really make a difference. The lectures are pertaining to everyone. Everyone that simply functions, it's pertaining to you. So that's that's another thing. Third thing is, make sure that you pray to HaKadosh Baruch to have mercy on you. There's different parts of the prayer that you could have a personal prayer in Amidah. Pray for HaKadosh Baruch to have mercy on you and to give you the strength to overcome this. To overcome the desires to only do it in a permitted way another thing is is the time to do tikkunim that's why many of the kabbalists and different people that follow the kabbalistic world uh they do uh fast during this time of the year uh some people fast a uh you know once a week some people fast twice a week some people fast more some people fast less some people don't fast at all uh and people ask me all the time should i fast and the answer is always the same if you fasting will allow you to learn even more Torah or at the very least as much Torah as you learn normally then yes go ahead but if fasting is going to hurt your Torah even by one percent it's better not to fast why because learning Torah is much more valuable than fasting much more valuable than fasting people would come to Rav and ask him what about fasting he said go learn Torah what about going to the graves go learn Torah what about doing this? What about doing that? All of those things are good, but learning Torah is number one. So you have to learn Torah. And one of the things you have to learn is about this specific issue. We have two books that you can download in English. You can download on our website for free. There are uh, some other books that uh, are a little bit hard to get that you can get uh, uh, on uh, different websites. But realistically speaking, the most amount of information that you're going to get about this topic in English is from our lectures simple it's not a uh really complimenting ourselves or patting ourselves on the back it's just a reality in english it's almost a unheard of subject uh especially uh how it was for the last five or six years seven years i uh, really any a lot of the material that came to uh place in english has only been in the uh, last couple of years for for uh people but uh, generally speaking there's a lot of information in hebrew but very very little bit in english uh furthermore in regards to uh this issue people that do fast good for them but since the sages knew there's going to come a time that we're going to live in a weak generation people that cannot fast and even if the ones that can fast every single time somebody was with anida a woman that's a uh having a period or a woman that is not his wife therefore she didn't go to the mikveh or if she was somebody else's wife Hashem Yishmol, uh so on and so forth all types of immorality crimes or he was uh doing uh, uh you know something by himself or she was all of these things require 80 plus fast per crime so the reality is the average person today 20 25 years old simply has to fast to eternity so since that's not going to really work out and you staying alive at the same time the sages instituted something relatively simple you do the fast with money and I've mentioned this time and time again. I mentioned it again simply because sometimes people watch the shiur, this one, and they don't watch the other one, so they keep asking me privately. So since this is the time we talk about this issue anyway, might as well mention it. We fast with money. How do we fast with money? You take the average value of how much it costs you to eat per day. Let's say, you know, obviously not your normal food. I mean, if you're gonna, if you're a rich person, your average day costs you three hundred dollars of food. Obviously, you have to. You know make everything uh, uh aligned to that perspective to that uh relevant to that but if you're an average person you could probably eat for five dollars a day five dollars every you wasting seed is 84 fast five times 84 is 420 dollars for each and every single time a person wasted seed they have to donate 420 dollars now specifically they should donate for this specific issue not only in mind but also and uh the cause itself it should be an institution whether it be our organization or anybody else that you know that's dealing with this issue 
should be uh, someone that's specific to this issue. Uh, someone that's teaching it, someone that's learning it, and so on and so forth. Why? Because it has to be relevant to you. Uh, so, and it can't be just like donating it to just uh, the uh, local uh, Chabad house or to uh, a new chandelier for the synagogue. That's not going to really work. So, the point is, is that any woman that was ever promiscuous, any guy that was ever promiscuous, again, themselves or otherwise, doesn't really make much of a difference. They have to do this tikkun at some point or another if they want to arrive in heaven clean. Now, you don't have to do the tikkun in essence in order to arrive in heaven because there is a Gemara in Masechet Yoma that says that if a person does tshuva for everything and you stop the crime and you don't do this anymore, technically you're going to go to heaven. What about all of the sins that you've made? All of the sins that a person made intentionally turn into accidental. Turn into accidental. Now, surely there's still a punishment for those accidental sins. So if you don't mind paying a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, punishment for the accidental sins, then you don't have to do the tikkunim. You keep your money, invest, put it, you put it in a stock market, maybe buy a few stocks, have $500 million by the time you die that you can't really use, and no problem, you don't have to do it. But if you want to be clear of any crime whatsoever when you arrive to Shemaim, then I would recommend you do the best that you can. Again, this is for you more than it is for anybody else. One of the main things that uh, I, I see sometimes people do is that they, uh, they try to do the fast, which is admirable. It's very admirable for a person to try to do the fast, but then they fail doing the fast and they figure like, might as well give up on everything. This is a silly thing. This is a silly thing. Again, you can fast once, you can fast twice, whatever you want to fast, but you have to also be realistic with where you stand. To go fast, 800 times or 8,000 times, however many fasts it is, it's not realistic for anybody in this generation. It's just not. There are some people that can fast several days in a row, which is uh, considered as if you fasted uh, many, many times, more than just three times. But the point being is that requires a lot of training uh, and uh, also monitoring. You can't just do it just because you feel like it. So the point being is, is that sometimes people need to realize that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gives you money to do good with it, not to just simply buy more houses or to have a Roth IRA account and maybe perhaps a 401k too, just in case. You have to make sure you use your money wisely. Now, we're coming out with this movie, Tikkun Abrit, Be'ezot Hashem, very soon. You know, pray for us that we succeed. Pray for us that we survive because this particular movie, unlike any other thing we've ever done, is Mamash 100% you know, fist fight with the Satan. Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. It's very difficult. I don't really want to tell you what's really going on because it's just some stuff that's just not necessary for anyone to know. It's just really difficult and it's beyond the, the scope of this conversation. But I can tell you for sure, it's not an easy battle. This thing comes out, this, it's almost finished. It's just that if it actually comes out, it's going to be like the biggest messirut nefesh, the biggest sacrifice we've ever made in our life. It's just that difficult. So... It's a very big spiritual battle. Anybody that's going to help support this particular film, the distribution of it, we're going to try to have it obviously marketed everywhere on the internet. Uh, all things considered, it seems like marketing is becoming more and more difficult since Google, Facebook, and uh, Twitter have decided to become the new president uh, and the new media, the new regulatory body, the new government, the new world order, the new everything. I think that uh, marketing is becoming a little bit more difficult. We'll have to be a little bit more creative than typically. But nonetheless, we're going to do everything possible to market it that way. We're also going to print out DVDs to distribute the hard copy. We're going to print out cards and so on and so forth. There's going to be a lot of different ways to get this film out there because we literally want to get this film out there to tens of millions of people right off the bat. Tens of millions of people right off the bat. If we did two million with the film of my private life, this should do at the very least 20 or even 200 million. That's how good this film is, but it's going to require a lot of help. So this is the time where people need to look at their investment account and see which one is more valuable to them, the investment in this world or the investment in the next world. That's why I mention it. That's why it's important because, again, Akadosh Baruch Hu decided that it's going to be ready around this time. Our goal is to have this film to answer everybody's question of when, 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 our goal is to have this film out before the end of Shovavim. Before the end of Shovavim. So we have five more weeks. We're hoping, Be'ezat Hashem, we'll have this film out within the next month. 
okay now that means that we're gonna have to have a lot of miracles happen during that time but nonetheless we're gonna need a lot of uh, a lot of money a lot of time a lot of miracles a lot of everything during that time uh and uh i don't want to release this film just hoping for the best you know we want to have a serious plan a serious marketing plan a budget and so on and so forth so if we can raise at least a few hundred thousand dollars i think that we can get it done but again i think that once it's out raising money for it's going to be relatively easy only problem is it's going to be a little too late for certain uh, parts of the plan you know once people see how good it is they're going to want to invest their house into it uh it's just simply that good but it kind of kills part of the plan to do it after the fact so again this is a uh just a uh advice anyone that wants to listen you know when you have a dream and you see a pretty woman you've had that now you never actually see an ugly woman in dreams it's always a pretty woman and by the way it's always the same woman for all of us all of us have a dream of the same exact woman and she's more dangerous than the satan himself who is she you're not even allowed to say her name why are you gonna call for people are addicted to it i live a normal life repent and you will find salvation